thick accented Chinese woman trying to speak English. And it's, oh, it's just awful. <laughs> Hello and welcome. My name is Alex Gonzalez. With me today is my good old friend, Jay Yi. Hey, that's me. And please remember that we are not game devs. How are you doing today, Jay? I'm doing good. I'm still very tired. Um, I feel kind of like slow and heavy at the moment. How are you, how are you doing? Um, I also feel slow and heavy. I feel yeah. like I'm ready for, um, like I was ready for bed when I got off work. But you hate those days where you're like, I could just crawl into bed and start all over again. Yeah. But, but those are not the energy levels we were talking about today. Today we are creating something new. Every week we are not game does. We'll create a new exciting video game idea that we have always wanted to play, but do not have any knowledge or know how to create the wonderful experience that are video games. And today is my turn to present We Are Not Game Devs 172nd IP. Why Let's are you get whispering? started with this. So, you are in modern day and you're trying to bring. You grew up in the 80s and you want to open an arcade to bring back all the kids. And what I want this to be is I want this to be a game where you create games inside making arcade cabinets, but you're literally creating games. So we, pre we provide a template such as uh, like we provide a template in um, how do I put this? A template such as like a beat em up game where you, st where you, where you put like, I want to create a beat em up game. And you're like, okay, I want it to either be one player or two player. And then um, by deciding, you can then decide, okay, one player, two player, fantasy setting, post apocalyptic setting. How are we going to make it? And then you slowly start adding all these details where it's going to be basically a game builder as a game. And then you build different cabinets and we'll have ratings. And depending on how people play them, you can um, gain currency and go from there. And I want there to be a story mode and then also an online mode where people can try the games you're making. And of course, there's going to be platformers and fighters and all that. But I want there to be some kind of like creative, I guess, build like builder where you can make all these things happen. OK. And we're trying to load it up with assets. The first thing that comes to mind for me is I don't think the game building portion of this is going to be super extensive, like, let's say, Dreams or even uh, Super Mario Maker. I, see I was thinking... It was going to be limited to 8-bit, 16-bit, and even like 32-bit. Yeah, and I, I, I kind of see it how like... I've never played this game, but how I imagine RPG Maker to work. Where it's literally... It gives you one screen and the type of mechanic. And then you just drag and drop from a bunch of assets that we provide. And then you mm -hmm. just drag and drop it onto the thing. And all you do is move like... There's like a meter for each one that ups their like difficulty level. So like, let's say you're making that uh, beat em up, right? And then you put up uh, like, think like double dragon or something. And then you put up like a ninja on screen. You can make it so the ninja throws like shuriken every second, or you can make it so the ninja throws shuriken every five seconds. And then there's like a mm -hmm. meter you can move up and down for difficulty. And then from there, it's just, the game kind of just plays itself like it's it's on this template so it just runs on its own and you just build a whole cabinet or the whole arcade full of cabinets where you build games in that way like for a shooter and stuff like that it would just have a basic outline and then you just drag and drop what assets you want to be moving on the screen but like you can't control I guess I guess this is kind of like a dumbed down Super Mario Maker. So maybe I dumped it or maybe I spoke too soon. Um, but so I, but like branched out where you can also make bullet hells or you can make fighting games or you can make like a light RPG. Um, yeah, it's it's Super Mario Maker, but you don't have to put like movement to the monsters and stuff. The monsters and stuff have their own movement and all mm -hmm. that like their own mechanics and how they work. And part of the game would be putting the assets into the game you're creating and seeing how the mon like the ninja only moves left and right and throws shuriken after moving left and right once or twice. Uh, you know what I mean? Right. Right. Versus. And, yeah. 
And I want these games to be designed so that they're not like games that you're going to. They're not 30 hour games that you're going to complete. It's going to be something where you're going to be able to beat it in two and a half to five minutes. I mean, like that's they're probably just going to be like arcade style where exactly what when you lose your three or lives, you die, it's over. Yes. Yeah, exactly. Um, I, I definitely see it. And then maybe the main the main main part of the game is you're running this arcade and as you earn more money from like it's going to be like a tycoon like game in my head where you start off with a small arcade and you could only have like three four cabinets and as you get more money you get either an extension or you get a new building and then you can start building more cabinets and, and get you more can assets. afford yeah, and you can afford more expensive games where eventually maybe pinballs unlocked and then maybe um, shoot 'em ups where then you can target the screen, you know, and it's one of those things where you're dragging a, cor- a cursor over. Mm, yeah, yeah, I see that for sure. And then maybe also as you're leveling up, you could start decorating your arcade and that brings up your appeal points or whatever. And so you could mm-hmm. attract more guests into your uh, arcade. And then eventually maybe you could add in like a barcade feature or whatever and then start like maybe we could even get a small mixology type of game in this as well where you start mixing drinks and stuff like that kind of like how absolutely uh, i played reg strings uh club or whatever that game was called but i think most people are familiar with um valhalla i think is what that game is called it was a bartending game i don't remember exactly what Mm. it's called but um yeah, we could just have that in as just a bonus because I feel like this game is either going to be like a very cheap Steam game or like a free mobile game. You know what I mean? I can definitely see it like that. And then, uh, you know, as we go through, there's going to be I just imagine it to be full of mini games, so to say. So mm-hmm. not only are you doing the mini games in terms of creating the cabinet, you're also doing the mini games such as, you know, mixology, bartending, um, treating it like a tycoon game where you're trying to up up the revenue of your um, arcade. What kind of arcade are you going to have? Because you're right. Barcades are a popular thing. Do you want to make it sports centered where all of a sudden maybe more sports games are coming in? So then your audience is uh, like a particular. Do you want to be RPG? Maybe more platformers? Maybe you or, could turn it into a, like a Chuck E. Cheese Dave and Buster's type of situation too. If you so Absolutely. Want and then or you can add like um, a Cooking Mama mechanic to it. And I'm thinking that there could even be like people who come in and give you high scores, for instance. Mm, so like yeah. or come in to score high scores, so then you can keep the high score. But if you keep the high score, more people will come in to try to beat you. Mm, and then you, mm-hmm. you can work it that way. I could also see it so if it is a Dave and Buster's Chuck E. Cheese situation, you could start adding like prizes. Oh, yeah. On the wall for like tickets or whatever. And maybe for the online component, these prizes, the prizes are all new assets for game building. Maybe what it is is these. What if um, going on that? What if you had like different like gotcha machines, like claw machines that you could win assets out of? Oh, I like that. You could play too. Yeah. So like all these games where you can win prizes or tickets. So like if you're playing. what is that one game where you roll a ball into the different circles? Like it's like a target ski ball. You could play that yourself and then you win tickets to then unlock assets. And same thing with um, the other games like claw machine and whatnot. I was actually getting there where like, yeah, we'll have like the prizes at this fake Chuck E. Cheese's to um, there would be all these assets on the wall, but you don't choose what goes on your ticket wall. It's just going to be randomly generated, maybe a daily mm-hmm. thing, maybe a arcade owner level thing. Different assets gets put on the wall. But that's incentive for you to either play your own games to set a high score or go to the online mode and go to other people's bar or arcades and you could get tickets from their arcades and then bring them back and buy these assets. And that's a second way for you to earn new assets for your games on top of the claw machines uh, to get new assets for your games. Absolutely. And I want this game to have like characters that come in so that you have regulars depending on which way your arcade goes. And mm-hmm. I want it to have kind of like a, like I said, I still want it to be a 16 bit ish game or like a retro style like that. So that uh, it has that feel of like characters coming in. They look good. It's kind of up 
but then it like when they talk a portrait appears where it actually shows their face like in a mm. very well drawn setting yeah uh, that way you get attached to your customers and whatnot i could see your customer base just being we could do that thing where like a lot of mobile games and smaller indie games do this but of course we're gonna have to ask a lot of them but if we don't we'll change their name so much it's hard to tell or you could tell but it's gonna be like you can't get us in trouble for it but like we'll do like a gory balrog for like uh uh oh yeah like kind of like a play on words with famous people in the industry exactly uh uh Teg Miller or something like that. Yeah. yeah. Milner or something. Uh, 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 Sim Reddies. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, yeah, 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 yeah. We I just totally take industry people and like put them in the game. Like how like a lot of mobile games would put PewDiePie in their game and like Ninja in their game and stuff like that, but just call them something else like Samurai instead of Ninja, you know? Yeah, definitely. We can do that and then have those characters in it so that they add. Do you want there to be a kind of story to it where like you're kind of doing the rise and fall and maybe you get more of a. Like following as it as it were, because we I can think even have be, like that one dude who cheated at Donkey Kong who sells hot sauces. I think it could be a light story mode. I don't think it's going to be like golf story, RPG, epic rise and fall story, but I think it's going to be like. Harvest Moon, or uh, I don't know exactly how Stardew Valley's story unfolds, but like how Harvest Moon, how it normally goes, is like your grandpa you never really knew just died and gave you his farm, and then you go. It's That's like Stardew a, Valley. It's a shitty ass farm, and he's like, there's a person there that kind of helps you along. That's always helped out at the farm, and he's just going to help you because he's just a helpful guy, and you just build it up. And then you start building community with the people in their city and village and stuff like that. And then eventually it's just, you know, there's no like, there's never ever a hero's downfall stage of the story. It's just always going up, but kind of just slowly. Yeah, it's and, always like a good time. Yeah, and maybe we can do like a small town sim type of thing where you could go into town and meet the regulars at your arcade and maybe you could like learn stories between like the different families that live in your town and maybe the purpose of doing that would be to promote your arcade every once in a while like you'll go mm -hmm. vi visit the local pub and be like hey you guys want to play some games you can come down to the or, arcade um, or and then that way how about let's do this if you talk to people in town they'll also give you assets where they're like, have you ever tried this? Or, hey, I actually have something in my garage that maybe you could use. Yeah. That I haven't used in a long time. Like, there'll be, like, social links that you could build with mm -hmm. your villagers. And then they'll, like, give you a piece of code. They'll be like, oh, I think I, I found this USB. And I think it's something that you could use or something like that, you know. And then you could start doing stuff like that. I, do you want, like a, like, a romancing option with your villagers? Are these villagers going to have cute personalities like they do in Harvest Moon. Why not? Yeah, let's do it. Let's make it let's make them have cute personalities and they can come around the arcade. Yeah, and then you could you could bring them to your arcade and then eventually you guys will get married and then you could have a kid and then it will be like a wonderful life where you're you'll eventually train your kid to take over the arcade business that you've brought up. Or if it's like a wonderful life, if you make really good friends with other people in your villagers uh or villages, your kid eventually is like I don't want to own a arcade. I want to be a scientist, just like Daryl. And you're like, fuck Daryl. Yeah. That happened in a, about. a Wonderful Life, Harvest Moon, A Wonderful Life was a great game. Very underappreciated, I'd say. That's hilarious, though. The fact that, that, like, at the end of the game, that's just how it rolls credits. I'm sorry, Dad. I don't want to do that. I want to go to college and become a scientist, like Justin over there. And I, I just remember roll. I spent hours in harvest moon a wonderful life trying to make my son be best friends with the hippie musician so he get, becomes a musician but i guess somehow my son thought i was best friends with the with the iron worker in town and he's like i want to be an artist i want to make metal sculptures and i was like no i never talked to that guy how did you <laughs> fucking like, think I that guy him. was my best friend um I don't remember the names of any of these characters. I just remember some of the characters like Duffy or Nami. But so I want to make it where it's like in the overworld, the art in the overworld is going to be like 32 bit and kind of like nice, clean pixel. 
And then when you're playing the games, it goes into like 16 bit or there's going to have to be an artistic style differentiation. You know what I mean? Maybe we can even do an effect where we do like a CRT effect when you're playing those games. So it feels like you're in the games versus the pixel art of the overworld. I'm definitely down for that. Yeah, for sure. That makes sense. I think, yeah, it's going to be like 32 bit sprites with like yeah text boxes with the actual good like hand-drawn portraits of your of Mm -hmm. the characters you're talking to like like how harvest moon kind of does it but yeah when you're playing the games they're going to be downgraded like 8-bit 16-bit look and then yeah like the idea of the crtv uh to it maybe and we it'll even be like you could see the outline of your cabinet sort of and like maybe the button layout and stuff like that and how about this? Every time you go to sleep, when you hit like a like a certain point, you're also going to have kind of like a fantastical element where there's someone that checks in on your progress and kind of hints you along. And we're going to call that character the Game Genie. And whenever you fall asleep in your arcade, the Game Genie will appear in your dreams and kind of guide you to where you need to go next. Not just that, but I, I'm, I'm stealing a lot from Harvest Moon here. But uh, the Game Genie or whatever, it's going to be like a Wreck-It Ralph situation where they like live in your arcade. And they really yeah, exactly. for your arcade but, and they go around. But no one else can see them. Exactly. But they, but you can see them kind of floating around. Yeah, yeah. And if it's like Harvest Moon, it's going to be like, we see that in your spirit, you love arcades and arcade cabinets. So we, mm-hmm. you could, you're the, that's the reason why you're the only one that could see us. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So um, I, I'm glad you're on board with that. See, I think I've, by playing Stardew Valley, I've created, like I have, an influence of Harvest Moons without ever playing Harvest Moons. Yeah, I I played the first five hours, I want to say, of Stardew Valley. And you definitely see the connections, especially early game, on how they were inspired by Harvest Moon. Mm-hmm. Um, it's way more in-depth than Harvest Moon. Harvest Moon's very, like, simplified and makes it really easy. And there aren't too many mechanics to it. But Stardew Valley, you could start doing a whole bunch of crazy stuff. Um I just couldn't get into Stardew Valley because I think I'm just not patient enough to play a farming sim anymore. Like, I even tried playing some Harvest Moon games. And to be fair, recent Harvest Moon games, very bad. Uh, But I just don't have the patience for that type of stuff anymore. I hear you. I don't think this game would benefit from a day-night cycle or anything like that, right? Like, there's nothing necessarily that would make it so. I'm wondering how, like, we progress, you know, or how we move forward. I think it will have a day-night cycle where it's going to be, like, So you know how in Stardew Valley, the first like four hours of your day is spent doing stuff on your farm and the last few hours are just exploring your village and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. I would say the first few hours before your arcade opens is going to be you doing the village social stuff and just talking to the people of your village, promoting it, maybe starting up like a trivia night or like a game night or something like that within town with like the the mayor and stuff like that. And that's what you'll be doing during the day. And then during the like noon to afternoon that's when you're running your shop and from there it's going to feel like more of a tycoon slash business management game where you're managing your arcade machines you're see- watching the customers come in and out you're like interacting with them maybe you're trying to sell them like cup ramen that you sell in the back or something like that um and you'll just see your numbers going up and higher and then maybe you could like deal with breakdowns and stuff like that during this time um it's funny it, that you mentioned breakdowns because i want there to be an antagonist but i want it to be another antagonist where it's um i want it to be glitches and bugs so i want it to be like these little bugs that you fight off in your arcade and then they can jump into the game and then change the game and you have to like go in and um take them out i want that to be a mini game as well yeah maybe i that'll want it to be, be like overbearing where it's annoying but some like a little bit fun yeah, maybe the the arcade management por- portion of the game, which will take place from like noon. Maybe you could set the hours even, but from like noon to let's say like eight p.m. or nine p.m., you're you're doing the bugs, you're making the drinks, you're serving the food. Like it's gonna be like a restaurant management slash mm-hmm. uh, zoo tycoon type of game. You know what I mean? Where it's like it's a bunch of mini games that you're playing. You're helping customers. You're doing maybe some social links will come up at the arcade. Like you'll have special conversations with the characters that you've been building in the morning at the arcade. Kind of like how Harvest Moon would sometimes 
have it so your love interest will visit you on the farm and that will interrupt your day and you have to like spend an hour with them doing whatever they're there for. Mm -hmm. I'm sure that happens in Stardew Valley as well. Uh, yeah, you'll have your social links, you're mixing your drinks, you're serving the food, you're fixing bugs, you're maintaining high scores, you're interacting with your customers. And that's during the major portion of the day. That's the bulk of the game. And then at night, that's when you're building your games and that you have like, that's where time kind of stops. You don't, you're not limited to like a couple hours, but once you're done building the game, it's like, all right, time to go to bed. We're going to launch this tomorrow type of thing. You know what I mean? Um, yeah. And then that will be where you're building your games. And I could see that you're not building a game every night, but maybe each night you're putting work into it. And maybe there's like a progress bar. And also maybe at that certain point of the time you're building your game, you can't afford an asset you want to put into that game. And so you have to wait a couple of days to build the money from your arcade to buy this really expensive asset. So you could put that into your game. And I forgot about that point too, is the fact that um, there's money in it. And that money can also build different cabinets and different assets so that you can build more games. Exactly. Yeah. And buy more assets. I think that's where the bulk of your money is going to go into is buying assets for your game to so drag then and drop there's, in. Exactly. So there's going to be that background mechanic too where now like you're earning money. So mm -hmm. you're not only maintaining everything, you're not only doing relationships, but you're also um, you know, building games earning money, managing relationships, clearing out bugs, consulting with the game genie. It's this is this is becoming pretty robust. Yeah, I think. Uh, I mean, obviously, I feel like huge influence of Harvest Moon and also like. Um, um, there's this game where you like just manage a store. I don't know what it's called, but you like manage, you put, you decide what's on sale and then you just wait for people to come in and buy it. But I, I definitely see elements of all those in there. Yeah. This is, this game's um, baked in and taken from a bunch of different games for sure. So we have the heart style down where we, we agreed it's going to be like 32 bit and then the games are going to be like 16 bit. Um, for our audience out there, that's like SNES 16-bit, I believe. I hope I'm right there. So music, it has to be like chiptune, right? Like um, both inside and outside where um, it's going to be a little bit more updated chiptune-y. When um, you're out in the town, it's going to sound nice, like kind of like ambient noises. And then it's going to be more video game where it, you know, it's going to have like that drum and bass through all that, that kind of upbeat spirit. And then like town music is going to be very calm, but it's mm -hmm. all going to kind of have that video game style. Yeah. And I also see that you could choose what soundtracks playing in each of your arcade cabinets mm -hmm. as well. Oh yeah. And there, yeah, it's, it's just going to be a lot of chip tune, eight bit, 16 bit sounding music where it's just very basic, uh, you know, synthesizer, 8-bit sounds, you know? And that's another thing that we're going to be able to unlock as well with your money is unlock a bunch of different soundtracks that we're going to have ready for you. Exactly. So that you're going to have a bunch to have so that eventually when you have different customization options, you'll be able to have uh, the customization option to have multiple songs in or what have you. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. So now that we got that, Let's go to pricing. How much is this game? How much are you willing to pay for this game? I see this game as like a $14.99 game on Steam and on Xbox. And then it just comes on to Apple Arcade and Game Pass. Just as part of the subscription service. Most definitely. Yeah, I see it as $15. That's going to be a nice price point. Something for people to pick up um, and play. Something that's going to relax you a little bit. And uh, not be too serious, but also kind of be a breath of fresh air. Mm -hmm. And Stardew Valley is, I think, 25 bucks, right? Yes. Yeah. So I think that's $14.99 is a pretty good price for this. All right, Jay. It's time to get your timer because we're going to name this game. All right, go. Arcade Reborn. Uh, 
let's see. That sounds. Uh, I thought of a name, but it, it was going to be sexual because I was thinking about the genie. And I was thinking about arcade mm. cabinets. I was going to call it the magic joystick, mm. but <laughs> that could be misinterpreted. My local people. arcade. What is it called? My local arcade. That's not bad. It gives people. I like names that tell people what it is, and it still feels very. Um, very i think that's it we're gonna go with my local arcade people are gonna like that six seconds and how many 66 56 okay my local arcade is an arcade simulator in 32-bit where you play as a shop owner who grew up in the 80s wants to revive the arcade industry you start off with small cabinets meet the local townspeople build up more Build a customer base. Decide which which uh, genres you want your cabinets to go into. And even find love in my local arcade. All right. So I think we have a game here, Jay. What do you think? Would this be a game you would want to play? And is it fun? I mean, I would give it a shot. Like I said, these type of games have been more and more difficult for me to get into as I get older. They were definitely more mm-hmm. my thing during high school where I don't know why I was into harvest moon and like games that you like, I was high school is when I was into harvest moon and like sim and tycoon games the most heavily. Um, right. Right. And then as I got older, for some reason, those games I felt like were too much of a waste of time. Maybe that's what it is, is yeah. those type of games take a lot of time to like learn everything. Uh, all the mechanics, learn all the characters and just be in town. And some days maybe you don't even do anything because you just plan the day poorly and you just wasted a whole day, and you know, those games feel most like games of ser- games as service games before those were a thing in multiplayer, mm-hmm. right? Because you were in there every day with something new to do. So it's one right. of those things where you had to go in every day and be like, okay, well, what's new here? What can I do? Where, where can I earn it? So being busier and having time at a premium, it does feel like this game would be hard to do, but kind of checking in every now and then. And maybe if you find a game that's addicting or even the online service where you go and play with other people's games Mm -hmm. that they've created, I think would be a lot of fun and uh, rewarding. For sure. So I think I would play it, but I would fall off probably pretty fast. Me too. I think that's probably what's going to happen to me. All right, now that we have a complete game, what game studio would you assign to be able to make my local arcade best? 100% Natsume Inc., which are the people behind Harvest Moon. I think uh, they've been having a lot of stumbles lately, and I think it's just they've exhausted the farming sim game. Like, all their current, most recent Harvest Moon games have been pretty shit. And their most recent game, I think, was a remake of Harvest Moon Friend of Mineral Town, which is 100% the best Harvest Moon game that you could buy and play till this day. It's it's probably the best farming sim game next to Stardew Valley. Uh, but from the screenshots I've seen of Friends of Mineral Town, the remake looks really bad. Uh, <laughs> it looks awful. But I think they just need a refresher try something new and go into a completely different genre of game that's not farming sim but still something that they do really well so yeah not too many ink okay um just for a hype because i know it would basically make it so people would would get really into it would be toby fox creator of Mm. delta rune as well as uh undertale Mm -hmm. I think that he would be able to make the style of game and make it really cool and fun and uh, really add a lot of depth to it Mm -hmm. while keeping the art kind of right there because his games have games within games. Right. I I think also along the same line of more hype behind it, I think uh, Yacht Club Games, the people behind Shovel Knight, could Mm -hmm. also take this and do something pretty crazy with it. Uh, they are very much focused on Shovel Knight and Shovel Knight spinoffs and sequels and stuff like that. But if they ever do need a break and do something a little bit smaller and more chill, I think uh, uh, my local 
arcade would be for them. And then I'm going to look up one more. Let While you look here. them up, uh, I also thought that Game Freak would also really oh, take yeah, this Oh, yeah, they do direction. do stuff like that. Yeah, they do, like, besides Pokemon, of course, they they always experiment with, like, weird, random side games all the time. One being a game that was locked on uh, 3DS and never released ever again, and... It came out right after my 3DS was stolen, and I just never wanted to go back and, you know, try it ever since then. Uh, but they made this, like, really cool solitaire game or, like, a horse solitaire I game where you, like, that. race horses or something like that. Mm -hmm. And it was supposed to be amazing, but I never got to try it out. And then for me, uh, now that I found them sidebar games, the people who made Golf Story on the mm. Nintendo Switch, mm -hmm. I think they would also be a great one here because they had fantastic art, a story within a golf game, and then golf little mini games within there. So I think they could still do the same thing here. Yeah, most definitely. All right. And with that, our 172nd IP has gone gold. We hope you look forward to this experience that will probably never release. You can write to appoundgames at gmail.com if you have anything to patch into the game we create today. Also, give us feedback. We are still learning how to make this show better, and your feedback really helps. We have a Patreon. If you'd like to back our ideas, please head over to patreon.com slash wearenotgamedevs. Patrons receive episodes two days early and an extra podcast at the beginning, which you caught the tail end of our conversation at the beginning of this episode. That's patreon.com slash wearenotgamedevs. If you liked our show, why not subscribe and give us all the stars on Apple Podcasts, Google Play Store, Spotify, YouTube, and more. And if they ask for a review, instead of reviewing our show, become your inner game critic and review my local arcade, the video game we just created. Thank you for joining us today. We'll be back next Friday with another new IP. Again, my name is AG. And I'm J.E. Thank you, and please remember that we are not game devs. I also like the idea of in the village there being a hyper specific store just for you. Like, you know how these games always have, like, why is there a random farming seed I, store? <laughs> I think there could be little Easter eggs like that where there's a random bush in the in like the town, and if you burn it or move it, there's like a random um, entry. Mm. And then there's just a like a guy in there and he's like um and he's just like a wizard and he's like huh what year is it and just like a bunch of different like uh um, yeah like callbacks small... to different IPs and whatnot. Yeah, callbacks and jokes and stuff like that. But... Or and we would definitely have like Hideo Kojima in there and stuff yeah. of that nature. But uh yeah, instead of like there being a game store, like there's no game store, like there's no GameStop here, but it's literally a store that sells assets for you to build games. <laughs> For your farm, you know what I mean? Or not your farm, your arcade. Uh, it's just yeah. like a random, hyper-specific, just for you. No one in this town ever buys anything from this stop. It's just you. What they do before you came? Who knows? Or there's... um, And then you can even have a fan that goes into your game and he's like, What? This is the sequel? Look at all these assets he reused. What the hell? And there's like some guy who's just 